Hey guys, my name is Jordan, but I'm sure many of you know that. Welcome to Casal del Guthri. I've been asked, I've been asked to lead a little video on the Holy Spirit, um, specifically how the Holy Spirit leads us, how the Holy Spirit leads you watching, how the Holy Spirit leads me as a Christian, and how that affects us. And I think I've come up with three ways in which he does, and I'm going to walk you through all those three now. So get your thinking caps on and, uh, and open your hearts and open your minds. But first, a little fun fact about the Holy Spirit. Did you know that we know the Trinity is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. But of all three, the Holy Spirit was the first one to be mentioned specifically in the Bible. Way back in Genesis 1-2. Genesis 1-1, God created the world. It just says God. It doesn't, it doesn't, it but then Genesis 1-2 and the Spirit with a big S, so we know he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Go look it up. Big S, Holy Spirit, hovered over the waters and the surface of the deep. So interesting, interesting little fun fact that you, know, you can brag about how much of a nerd you are, like me. So the, the primary way I believe the Holy Spirit leads us through this bad boy, the Bible, the best book, the best collection of books <laughs> or letters or whatever. It's now one book for me. And I love it. It's the best weapon a Christian has. And a lot of the time there's a stigma. You're kind of a loser or whatever. You've probably experienced that as young people in school. Uh, I know I did. Even, even now I'm 31. And for some reason Christians don't read their Bible very much. It's, this is the most life-giving direction I could ever ask for. And it's right here. And all I've got to do is read it. So read it. <laughs> Spend a little time every day and just read it. Honestly, pick a Bible reading plan, uh, research a specific chapter or a specific subject. Oh, okay, God, I want to learn about forgiveness. So Google Bible verses about forgiveness and then just spend the next week or two just going through them, just a little bit every day. But get your nose in this book. It's so freaking good. It's the best book in the world. There's no other book. Another fun fact, this is the most stolen book in history. And hopefully the people that have stolen it, when they read it and say it says don't steal. <laughs> I think it's the Gideon's Bible from hotels and stuff. But yeah, it's survived countless attacks and it's still here. The validity of the word of God is free for all. And all we have to do is open our uh, Bibles and just absorb it. Just ask God every time you read it, every time you open it. Holy Spirit, would you show me something of what's in these pages? Would you reveal yourself to me? Would you <clears throat> reveal what you're like to me, God? Would you show me what you're like through these words? Get yourself a translation that you like. Um, I would say be careful about what translation you choose. That's all I say on that, but just be careful. And get your nose in this book and start learning. Read just one chapter a day. It takes a few minutes. Just kickstart your day with the Bible. It's awesome. Right, point number two, he leads us with wisdom. You know, the Bible says, <clears throat> the Bible says, if you ask for wisdom, God will give it. So ask for wisdom, and I really believe that God can, uh, he leads you through the wisdom that other people have gained when they have asked for it. That's why we submit to our parents. That's why we submit to our manager at work or our school teacher, or our pastor, or whoever it is. God has given these people wisdom, and we can, we can really learn from that. We can really draw out their experience, their knowledge, and apply that to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the second way. The first way, let's recap in case you, lest you forget. The first way, the Bible, read it. The second way is learn from, your, learn from other people who have got wisdom, who have got experience. I really do believe that God can speak to you through them and the Holy Spirit can lead you through other people. The third way is, um, perhaps this is the most least biblical way, um, but the Bible, I, I really believe that the Holy Spirit leads us sometimes with internal prompts. Now the thing to remember about internal prompts, because there's some people that um, would take these too far, let's just say that. The Holy Spirit will never prompt you to do something which the Bible says don't do or, or, or contradict something in here. Oh, the Holy Spirit just prompted me to go and punch someone or, 
or, or murder someone, but it was God that told me to do it. No, he didn't. Because what he will tell you secretly and then directly to you, however he reveals that, will never contradict what he says in here ever. So that's how you can test and discern what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Is, does it line up with what's in here? Yes. If, if, it's, if the answer is yes, then good. If it's no, ignore it. It wasn't from the Holy Spirit. It might be from a spirit, but not the Holy Spirit. So be careful about prompts because everyone can feel like they get something or they just feel it in their gut, they feel it in their heart, whatever. But uh, it could be from God or it could not. You have to be discerning. And the only way that you can be discerning, full circle, is if you read your Bible and you understand what the Word of God is. So there's your three ways. Read the Bible, learn from other people, and listen to those little prompts that come up in your heart or in your mind that say, I know, I should do this, I should go say that, whatever. But just double check that they are of God, that they are the way that God does want you to do things. Okay? Be blessed. Jordan out.